Yeah, listen, I, thanks, Sarah. You know, overall, when I when I think of big tech here, overall, I mean, listen, this isn't going to be kind of the beat and raise type quarters like we've seen in, in the last three years. We've got probably the, the, the most the most headwinds we've seen in years now, right? But the hope here is valuation has really discounted many of those challenges, um, whether it be, you know, consumer issues, whether it be supply constraints, uh, Russia, Ukraine, you know, the, a stronger dollar, I mean, tons of uncertainties out there. But at the end of the day, as far as um, Alphabet is concerned, I mean, it's all going to be about the search business. It's going to be about YouTube, and we think it's going to be about the cloud. And we're expecting fairly good results out of all three of them. Um, in terms of the search side of things, we're looking at 20% plus growth. Um, on the cloud side of things, I think that's going to be really important as long as we can see 35 to 40% growth on that side of things. I think, you know, I think overall the quarter holds up very well. But again, it's all going to come down now to, to Q2 guidance in the second half of the year. And as far as the downside potential, I think, to consensus estimates, I'd say maybe max about 3 to 5% to the downside. And given that, coupled with the valuation of about 17, 17 and a half times earnings to our 23 estimate, um, I just, I feel like it's a bit overdone here. The problem, Angelo, is that all those those headwinds that you mentioned that have been hurting the stock and, and all of stocks, rising dollar, guess what? It's it's still strengthening and still making new highs, going back to 2020. The, the war in Ukraine, still happening. The weakness yeah. in the economy, starting to come. So my, my question is, what, what sort of insulation does Alphabet's ad business have to these kind of cyclical and, and macro factors, which don't appear to be getting better? Because that's going to be the yeah. key, right, for guidance. Yeah, no, absolutely. Listen, I, I think as far as Alphabet is concerned, I mean, typically most marketers out there, um, the last thing they'll usually cut is kind of the search side of things. That's typically that typically holds up much better than other aspects of kind of the ad space. And I think maybe that's why, you know, Alphabet is kind of seen as a bellwether here relative to other ad oriented or ad driven type of companies out there. And that being said, I mean, there's clearly a lot more uh, tied to um, Alphabet here, rather than just kind of the search side of things. Again, we do see good results mm -hmm. on the YouTube side of things, as well as the, the cloud side of things. Decelerating growth, but nonetheless, I think the secular tailwinds there still remain intact, despite some of the concerns that we kind of highlighted. If you like Alphabet as, as sort of a value play, that it's been beaten down, what, what about Meta? You're on hold, but your price target is 294, and the stock is trading, I don't know, 182 or so. So you consider yeah. it also a good deal? So listen, I think as far as, as Meta is concerned, to us, it's a bit of a value trap. I mean, we're not as bullish on that side of things. Our concern definitely here is more on the, the, the user side of things, whether or not that can continue to grow. I mean, currently the street looking at about 2 to 3% growth here for Q1 and Q2. Um, I don't know if you're there. I think the bigger concern here is do we potentially see negative numbers, um, especially as we kind of go into Q2 on a year-over-year -year basis. If we do, I think all of a sudden the, the meta story looks very similar in many respects to what we're seeing out of the Netflix story, whereas you kind of have significantly higher OPEX numbers, significantly higher CapEx spend, you know, amid a, a period where that, those ad dollars aren't kind of um, offsetting kind of the, the growth trajectory that, or the, the investments that they're looking to make. You also cover Apple, which has been a little bit more resilient, and it reports on Thursday. What do, you, what do you expect there, given especially some of the new concerns this week about China and expanding lockdowns? So, you know, as far as the, the March quarter is concerned, we do expect them to be overall. I mean, you know, as far as the iPhone side of things, when you look at smartphones on a year-over-year -year basis, probably dropped about 10% year-over-year, more pronounced on the China side of things. So it would be interesting to kind of see what they have to say about China. But at the end of the day, the market share gains has really been phenomenal for Apple. You're talking, talking about 15% market share a year ago, about 18% here in Q1 of this year. So, you know, overall, the market share gains, we think, offset some of the declines in the broader market. But I think as far as Apple is concerned, the key is going to be services. We do see about 17% growth on the services side of things. And that's really the crux of the growth story for Apple. So as long as that holds up, we like this story. And then on the capital allocation strategy, we're looking for $100 billion and a 7% dividend hike. So, you know, probably another thing that investors are hanging their hat on right now. It's, it's Apple's now down about 11.5%. Angela Zeno, thank you.
for helping us pregame some of those earnings. By the way, we've taken a little bit of a leg lower, and the Dow is now down more than 700 points. We are making new session lows as we speak, down 712. UNH, United Healthcare, is the biggest drag, along with Boeing out of earnings tomorrow. And